So we're talking about royal protocol here. Yeah, there's a protocol necessary. I'm not sure why um, most people that are born again struggle with God. I mean, I'm not sure why we, it's tough for us to trust God. But I'm telling you the truth. When you release your mind to trust God, it's in your mind. If your mind, I don't care how much you, you feel spiritual, if your mind cannot line up with what God has already done, you can't receive it. It has to line up. You see, it has to line up. And I'm not talking about just saying stuff. I'm talking about leaving it, walking it, doing it. You know, you, you walk, you, you just God's son. You, you, you act like God, walk like God, speak like God, you know, release power like God, do stuff like God. You know, you are just different. That's what we've been called to become different, not beggars in the kingdom. Every kingdom, not, not democracies, kingdoms. South Africa is a republic, so it doesn't have protocol. You can do whatever you want. You can talk the way you like, act the way you like, swear if you want, curse if you want. You can, you can you know, do whatever you like because you there's no protocol in republics. But they are, the, every kingdom has got protocol. If you are a son of a king, you are taught protocol from the time you are a baby. You are taught how to eat, you are taught how to sleep, you are taught how to talk, you are taught how to wave, you are taught how to, to speak. Even your language can be the, like the language of commoners. Commoners are people that are not in the kingdom as kings. They are not children of kings. So the non-believers, some of your folks, some of the people you hang with, they are commoners. They are not born again people. So you cannot expect people that are not part of a kingdom to have the protocol of the kingdom. But this protocol to God's kingdom, this is very important. Without you understanding this protocol, you'll not be able to receive what God has for you. And your struggles will be your struggles forever. And you'll be wondering, where is God? Father, I'm praying, but where are you? But I'm telling you, the God that I serve appears to me all the time and talks to me all the time and gives me secrets about how to take over things all the time. I can't begin to tell you the business secrets that God has taught me and how God will take me to take something over. Just God teaching me, and I do it, and it works all the time. He appears all the time, the God I'm talking about. But there's protocol to that appearance, and if you don't live by these protocols, God will not appear just by grace. He appears to you because there's a protocol that is necessary for you to accede to your throne. You cannot have a throne without that protocol. It's very, very important. Now, let's go to, um, to my, to my um, am I controlling here? All right, let me control. There we go. Royal protocol. The church is God's training school for restored kings because no king can effectively reign without proper training. You sitting in here, you were kings, and through Adam you fell, and Adam lost the kingdom. God restored it through Jesus, and when he restored it through Jesus, it was 4,000 years later of fallen kings. These kings had fallen. They did not know protocol of their kingdom. They did not know how to talk. They did not know how to act. They did not know how to speak when they fell. So 4,000 years later, God restores the kingdom through Jesus. Now, when he restored the kingdom, God does not leave an angel down here on earth, you know, just, you know, millions of angels physically that we can see. God does not leave even, um, you know, uh, God does not come down here himself and hang around with us. God leaves us a book. The book is necessary for training. A book is more important than the presence of God walking around here himself. He leaves you a book. You have the Holy Spirit in you, which you can't see, though with his eyes. So that's why many people battle to know he's there. But you've got the Holy Ghost. However, God leaves you a book because the book is necessary for your training. If you don't believe the book, you cannot inherit your inheritance. The inheritance is in the book. The car is in the book. The house is in the book. The wife, I'm telling you, it's in the book. So, but I read everything I don't, it's in the book. There are things that are hidden for you. When you read a normal scripture, in that scripture will be the thing you want if you keep going in. While you are reading a scripture, you, if you read it nicely and go in and begin to look in at it, out of that scripture is born something else. Believe you me, it's born. Sometimes I'm reading certain scriptures and, and suddenly I see a car in the scripture. Oh, really? I see a house. 
Before we bought our house, I saw the house two years before in a, in a scripture. And I began to confess that scripture. And I began to confess that scripture. And I told Pastor Lee and we began to confess together that scripture. Two years later, we had that property. It was not something that we just felt we wanted. It was seen in the book. While it's reading the book, it came out of there. I don't just go out there and say, oh, wow, this is what you do. I really like, oh, wow, that's, no, no, I have to, it first, see, with, listen, our every foundation is word. It first comes out, it comes out where I don't even know I need it. Boom, it, oh, wow, it came out of the word. I'm not talking about just in my brain. It came out of the written word of God, but that word became rhema to me. Now I walk in it. Now I possess that thing using the word. Look at 2 Timothy 3.16 in the message. 2 Timothy 3.16. Every part of scripture is God's breath and useful one, and useful one, one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. So that's why scripture is there, to train us to live God's way. So you are being trained. So the church is a classroom. It's not a place just for shouting and having being happy. It's a place for training. So you are being trained. That's why we've got Bible college. It's for training. That's why we say some of you guys can, can you join us and start being home cell leaders? You are being trained. The more you refuse that training because you are too busy, the more you cannot enter into your calling and the plan God has for you. Because you have refused what God has already put in front of you which was needful to help you. There are people praying, Father, please, my finances are not working. And God says, I've been asking you this whole time to be a home cell leader. I mean, asking you this whole time to be an usher. I've been asking you this whole time to serve, but you don't have time for that. If you don't have time for that, you won't have time for the blessing because your blessing is in your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Without your purpose, you can't have your blessing. It's in the purpose. What is it that you are doing for God or are you a chair warmer just warming up chairs? You need to make a choice to serve God properly. Get out of the thing of just being, you know, I don't have time, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Let me tell you this. Anybody who tells you that they are busy to come pray or busy to come to church, they are not busy. They just don't value it. Anything you value, you get time. Hello? Anything, anyone you love, you hang out with. If you've got a friend that says, I never have time for you, they don't value you, walk out of there. Because their best friends, they always hang with them. Well, after work, I don't go hang at your house. I go to Pastor Lee. Now, I, if it was a scale of 10, maybe you're on 7, but she's on 10. You understand what I'm saying? I value you, but not to the same level. So I go to you. Don't let me find you. You also go back to your people. You don't come to me. Hello? It's, it's a fair game, isn't it? Whoever you value, you go back to them. How many of you go to work every day, Monday to Friday? Let me see your hand if you go to work Monday to Friday. Don't go to work tomorrow. Just stay at home. <laughs> See, it's funny to you because you value your work. So you go there no matter what, isn't it? You can't say to your boss, ah, you know what, I was really tired. That's, I came from job late. I was tired. You won't say that. You'll be at work. Why? Whatever you value, you connect with. So don't say, I don't have time. Say, I don't value it. Be honest. Somebody said, where did you get this guy from? <laughs> Straight from God. So protocol is important. Now, this is the protocol of the kingdom. We are going to go to the next slide. These things are very, very important. I'm going to teach two today, and hopefully I can teach more next week. God willing. The kingdom of God has outlined citizen protocol to be followed by its citizens for guaranteed personal success. The kingdom of God has outlined citizen protocol. All of you here are citizens of heaven. There is no citizen of heaven that should be struggling at any level. Now listen to me. Any struggle you face in your life, is a, it could be disobedience where you disobeyed God at one place and now you have, you have to fix that. You get what I'm trying to say? This, every place where I went through problems, I disobeyed in the past. I'm telling you, I actually knew this place, if I didn't make this decision, I wouldn't have been at this place. So I knew it was me, so I corrected. And I went back again in line. Even though I went through some difficult times, but I came back again to that place. And God will always restore his people, he loves his people. So the kingdom is an outland, a citizen protocol to be followed by citizens for guaranteed personal success. Everybody in this room here today must be practicing this. This is the protocol of God's kingdom, Galatians 5.22. 
But the fruit, so while I'm on Galatians, you guys can um, work for me 2 Peter 1 from verse 4. 2 Peter 1 from verse 4. While I'm reading that, I just want to give you 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Watch this. But the fruit of the Spirit, watch, this is the protocol of the kingdom. Number one, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. One more down. Oh, let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter. And I want to show you something, to, um, Second Peter chapter 1. I want to show you something here where Peter is referring to this, but in, he, in a different way. This is very far. We've also been given absolute terrific promises to pass. We can do it. Maybe let's read it in the KJV, because there's something there that I want to see in the KJV, the original. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Verse, verse, verse 5. This is very, very powerful. And besides, he says this, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge. Six, and to your knowledge temperance, and to your temperance patience, and to your patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love or charity. Okay? Now watch what Paul is talking about this, Galatians 5.22. Go to verse 8. This is really what I want you to see. It says, for if these things be in you, the ones that he just mentioned, or Galatians 5.22 things, he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. So in other words, whatever you touch will become fruitful. You won't be barren using the word of God. Whenever you look at the word of God, it will bear fruit for you because you understand these things and they are in you. They are in you. Now, these things have to be in every born again child of God. Very, very important. Now, the first thing that you are taught as a kingdom child, first thing we have to teach you today for this protocol to work, this is very, very important. Amen. Compulsory kingdom protocol. This is compulsory. This is not like a, an option. It's compulsory. Okay, number one. Love. There are different types of love which I've already named there for you. Different types of love. There's eros. Eros is the love that is like Pastor Lee I have. It's romantic love. I've got eros for Pastor Lee. The Greek has got different words for love. It doesn't mean the same thing. So the one that is mentioned in the scripture, the love he's talking about here is not eros. Eros is the love that I have for my wife. Philia is the love that you have for your friends. You know, I philia my friends. I've got my friends, I meet you. Hey, I philia you. That's what I mean, I love you. So if I said I love you to somebody who's not my wife, I'm not using romantic love. I'm using philia love. So please, don't get your head big. If I tell you I love you, say, oh, pastor loves me. No, I don't love you romantically. Believe you me. It's filial love. Then, then, then you got this one. This thing, actually in the Greek is torge, but in English is toge, but it's torge in, in, in Greek, which means the love you have for your family members. So that's the love that I have for my family, my storge, the love that I have maybe for Michaela or for Abby or for Ela, the love that I have for my family member. But for Pastor Lee, I've got eros. So if I say to Michaela, I love you, I'm saying to you, I storge you. That's the love I have for my child or the love that I have for a relative who is normally same blood. A lot of the other relatives might fall under filia, but the close relatives that you have, like your mother, your dad, you storge them. Okay? Then what we're talking about, the fruit of the Spirit is not those ones. Eros, filia, storge is not those. The fruit of the Spirit is talking about agape. That love there is love, loves the undeserving. Yeah. So the, for you, when you come into the kingdom, from today, you're going to have to love people that don't deserve. You don't love other people because they are white or they are black. You love even people that are not your color because love does not see no color. The kingdom citizens in heaven, we're going to be all mixed bunch of people. And there's a lot of born-again children of God that don't go to particular churches because those people don't look like them and they are not fulfilling the love of the Spirit. This is agape. Loves that, you know, it loves. It's un you don't even, people don't even deserve it that you love. Loving people we don't like. It sounds like an oxymoron. Loving people you don't like. There are people you don't, they're not likable, but agape will love them anyway. 
I love you no matter what. I love you anyway. You don't like them too much. You love. I did not say trust them. I said love them anyway. I talked about the difference here yesterday, so I'm not going to teach about it today. So I talked about the prayer meeting. So, but the thing is that I can still love you, but there's a way that I can love you and still not be with you. There's a way that I can do that. But I don't have time to go into those nuts and bolts. Agape is a matter of the mind. It's not loving. It's not in the spirit. Oh, I love you spiritually. No, it's a mind thing. It's a decision. It's deliberate. It's not an emotion. I have to choose that part of your acceding to the throne. If you want to walk in supernatural wealth, in healing, you're going to have to make up your mind to love people that are hard to love. Let me tell you something. That's why in this church, if you are faithful, you'll be involved anywhere in the church. I don't choose people here based on their skin color or based on tribal origins. We speak the same language. We're born in the same tribe. You're wasting your time because I am not. One, I don't hang with you because you're in the same tribe. In fact, if you do, if you're not faithful, I'll slap your jaws. Even if you're in the same tribe, I want to hang with you because oh, because we are all black. So let's do our thing. No, it doesn't work here with black because I don't see black anywhere. My wife is colored. My kids are in between Chinese, Japanese, whatever they are. They are mixed. You know what I'm saying? And I, and, and 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 I'm a black man, and she's in the, and her grandfather. If her grandfather is, is a white guy. They grandfather there's Africans. For you to have a colored, you must have a white and a black. Mixed. So she is mixed. Hello? So I can't hate white people because uh, my wife's grandfather is a, a white man. <laughs> and I can't dislike colors. Because, you know, I mean, you know, because my wife is colored and she looks Indian too. So Indians are also colors and they're all my brothers. <laughs> They're all my brothers. In their colored, all same family. Then, the, then, then all the white guys, they're all, we are, we are all close. We are all, we are brothers. Why? Because, because you know, as, as much as they, you know, they, they, were, they didn't stay in the oven long enough, so they stayed a little bit pale, you know. So, so but they're still my brothers because, because Pastor Lee's great. You know, you got to say, so I do, there's no born in me of not liking another person because of the way they look like. To me, everybody's family. If you don't like me because of the way you look, that's your problem. You go to, to bed with those ho -hos. If people don't like you, they're the ones going to bed with it, not you. You'll be watching your favorite Netflix movie, yes, laughing, <laughs> laughing, hitting fire, and they're, they're groggy because they go, bleh, bleh, and they, it's like a stomach, you know, like a running stomach, but in your heart. You've got diarrhea in your heart. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, Agape, I have to love you. As a kingdom citizen, these are, Charles and them are taught how to do certain things. In England, because that's a that's royal family. In the kingdom of God, the royal family are taught this is your protocol, this nine. It's fruit. It comes from one fruit. So different fruits. One, the, the fruit of the spirit. It uses the word fruit. Okay? So love is deliberate. It's not an emotion. I don't wake up in the morning and I feel like, you know, this morning, I don't really love her. I love you anyway. Even if you got crippled, I'll love you anyway. That's agape. I love people that don't look like me. When they leave my house, I don't say, let me wash all my towels because black people use my towels, sis. Or white people use this or that. There is no talk like that. When you leave, you are my brother and you are my sister. We, we, are, we are the same people. That's agape. You have to accede to agape to accede to your inheritance. Without these things, you can't get your inheritance. That's why many people are blocked out. Many Christians are suffering. They are poor. They are lacking. In the, and they wonder, where is God? It looks like he only favors one or two children. You have to walk in this nine. If you walk in this nine, this nine was spoiled when Adam ate the fruit in the garden. When he ate the fruit, he ate in the garden, destroyed this fruit and there was no more in it. This thing disappeared and God had to bring it back through the Holy Spirit again. But Adam had full of that. For a king, a king in the kingdom of God has to have that and you are that king. Now that's very, very important. And the next um, one thing you have to have is joy. Joy is of the spirit. It's of the spirit. 
is the foundation. Its foundation is in God's word. It's not circumstantial. It never leaves. Joy never leaves. When I say joy, I'm, talking, I'm, not, talking about, I'm not talking about happy. You are happy because the, pre, the Springboks won the World Cup. But let me tell you, you are not still as happy today as you were the first day. When they won that night, some of you couldn't even sleep. You went to drink your favorite drink that night. They won, they won, and you're phoning all your buddies. But how many of you know that that happiness faded? Some of you bought a dress, it was so nice. But when you look at your photos, you look like, like one of those, you know, uh, you know scarecrows. I mean, you look like a scarecrow. If you look at the dress that you bought five years ago, you were really fighting for it. You're crying and you're sobbing. Some of you go and look at your metric photos and look at your metric dress on your metric or your wedding dress. You look like, what is this thing in this white dress? That thing you wanted, you even wanted to divorce your husband before he could marry you for that dress. Now I got you the dress, you're so happy. Now five years down the line, those wedding photos look like, man, who are these? How many of you have ever seen your old photos and you are very happy with the old photos? Why don't you post those old ones on social media? You don't post the old photos on social media because, because it's not your favorite photos. Because when you look at your clothes, you're like, what's wrong with it? I looked at their photos. They were at Sunni or Han. I said, what was wrong with this? What, what was wrong with all of us? It's like, it's not, I mean, the way we looked, the clothes, the everything, it looked like we were not cared for. <laughs> we looked terrible. Especially Sunni looked really terrible. It's like, you know, what? He wasn't, what, 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 why, why is he dressed like that? What's wrong? And, and, and I looked, and I said, you know, it's the size where you wear those, you know, like waist jeans, and they flare out like that, but, but you've got belts, and you tuck in, and you, I, I was like, no, but I'm saying that the style, people could, you could afford to get that jean, did everything you could, and you were happy then. But four years later, I saw unhappy with that picture even on a tear. It was because happiness is temporary, but real joy never leaves you. The joy of the Spirit is something that is in your heart, even if there's no money, even if the bank says there's no money, you're going to have to learn to walk in that joy. That joy only comes from the Word. You have to find a scripture every day, every day that speaks to you. And you take that scripture and you say, Father God, I've given, therefore it's been given back to me. Good measure, praise down, shaking together and running over. God is giving it to my bosom. I've got all the money that I need. My bills are paid. My lights are paid. My house is paid. I am fully seen to. You have to go into the word every day because the real joy of God comes out of the word, not out of circumstances because circumstances will pull you down, man. Or you see all the wars and they tell you now, I had petrol prices going up in February. How many of you hear that? Petrol prices going up in February. It just came down now. But now because of the war in the Middle East, uh, you know, pay, oil is becoming a bit of a, you know, people are beginning to have issues now. Maybe we're going to have shortages of oil. Not at the moment, but it looks like it's trekking there. If it keeps trekking that way, fuel prices are going to go up. Not because of Ramaphosa, because of what's happening in the world. And when it goes up, your tank is, no, is going to go up by another 30, 40, 50 cents. What are you going to do? You got no more, you know, 30 more cents now per liter, 40 cents per liter, then it's fuel, then it's bread, then it's this, then it's that. So if you go by the expenses of the fuel, you are going to be sad all the time. Joy is something that you're going to have to have, and you're going to have to learn to rejoice by choice, because as a kingdom citizen, this is part of your protocol. You're going to have to learn to walk in love and to walk in joy. Joy is always happy. Somebody says, you know, I'm feeling moody on a Monday morning. Man, you know, I mean, go, go wash your face and be happy. Because I tell you now, all of us want to be said. All of us, we wake up and we feel like, you know, I feel like I'm under the weather. Do stuff that makes you happy. And craft and stir that joy in you. I refuse to think negative thoughts. So when I sit down and the devil says, nya, 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 I'll tell him, son, get away from here, man. You know? I don't talk to the devil at the level of where I am now. I talked to him at the level when I just got born again. He could not stop me to be born again. How dare you want to talk to me at this level when I've already gone years and years and years? Why would you kill me? If you're such a big guy, why are you trying to bully me now? I bully him now. If he hears, if he, when I wake up in the morning, the devil cries, literally. Or when I just turn at night, I'm just like I'm waking up. <laughs> He's screaming to his body. Ah, he's up! <laughs> and I'll be like, ah, I'm just turning, devil. 
<laughs> I have learned in ministry, no matter what people say, I keep my joy. Because what Satan is trying to do is try to steal the joy. If he steals the joy, he steals your faith. If he steals your faith, he steals everything you have, including your health. It's all stolen through joy. You have to learn to rejoice even when it doesn't look like a rejoice. You have to learn to be in that rejoicing is your answer. Yeah. While it's trying to enjoy just, just rejoicing, it's a spiritual thing. You see, sometimes it's not so apparent outside. But at the end of the day, you have to send a memo to your face. Because if you say I'm full of joy, why you look so sad? No, I'm joyful. No, you're not joyful. Joyful, you must be able to, you know. And, and these things look so like um, they're just like little things. But I'm telling you now, I've realized that we struggled for years and years and years and years and years struggled. We thought we need to run this business. We did. It didn't work. When I go run that, 70 business, I went to the USA trying to run a business. Nothing worked. No matter what I tried, I, tr I went there. Nothing worked. And I thought it was a big thing. No, God says that now that you are a king, I supply everything you need. All you need to do, see, don't worry about money. I'll supply what you need, but walk in this protocol so that you can accede to the inheritance that I've already set for you. Like Pastor Lee said, you know, a child is walking around here, one of the young girls here, she already has everything she needs to give birth to children. But it has to be released, you see. To release your blessing and, and what God has for you, you have to walk in these things. You have to walk in love. True love does not hurt. Now, if you look at it, there should have only been one fruit, which is love. Because love is a, if you look at love, love, all that on the bottom, joy, peace, blah, 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 it's all the offspring of love. All of it is the offspring of love. And, and when you start to go out there and you begin to love the people that are hard to love, you love, you love some of your folks, your you know, mothers that, you know, they never treated me well, you better go love them again. What do I mean love them? I don't have anything against them. Maybe I don't have to talk to them every day on the phone, but I don't have anything against them no more. On my side, I choose to have peace. When you walk in these things, Supernatural deals open for you. God sends things your way that you could never have put your finger on. Amen. They begin to come your way, see? And so me, I've learned to be full of joy. I'm just loving the Lord. I, I, no stress around me. And I don't hang around with battery drainers. You know, put that drain your battery, and you're using your apps. They drain all your apps. Now you can't go on your WhatsApp and your Instagram because they drained all your apps. Don't hang around with battery drainers. You're going to have to make choice in 2024 to choose the people that you're going to walk around. So this is a compulsory protocol. So this week and going forward, you're going to have to learn to walk in love. If you walk in the full nine, miracles work will be in your life daily. The full nine. This is the protocol for God's children. Joy. How much joy do you have? Has Satan stolen your joy? I don't have work, pastor. I don't know what I'm going to People tell me all the time, you know, pastor, I'm, I've got faith, pastor. And you're worried like this. Yeah, but I have faith. Faith and worry don't reside in the same place. It's either you've got faith or you've got worry, but you can't have both. It's either you're male or female, but you can't be both. If you, if you really have faith, you've got no worry. I showed you with Peter how Peter slept when he was going to be hanged the following after Easter. said after, you know, Passover, they're going to hang Peter. Hey, Peter was sleeping, an angel had to hit him on the side, and Peter woke up. And, 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 and the man, had, he was not even dressed, he said, he was just wearing his drawers or something, and his thing was hanging. You know, some of you, if you know you're going to be killed, you'll be covering your head with a blanket. This guy was so much at peace that he said, ah, you know what, I'm relaxing, it's hot in this prison, man. I don't, you know, if you know you're going to die, it doesn't matter if you're hot or cold. I mean, you'd rather be hot and die nicely. You know, but that man removed everything and he was lying there, cooling himself down and not even at peace and an angel to wake him up. Faith sleeps. Real joy will sleep. Real joy will sing at midnight. When it's 12 midnight and I'm in chains, I'll sing to God and I'll lift up my, um, my mouth and I'll sing loud. Early in the hours, I'll praise him. I'll give him honor. Real joy doesn't go around saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where my money. I don't know. Like a broken record. Ah, real joy is, 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 is just... Man, <laughs> it's good. So that's why I've learned to do things around my life and around my house that give me joy. If the devil wants to be, talk to me, I'll just get my basketball and shoot some hoops. 
and he's angry because I'm scoring that hoop. He gets jealous. In, in. Like, you know, why are you scoring those hoops? He's angry too. He's a jealous guy. Because he wants to score all the hoops. He's jealous. So I do things around me that makes me happy. Oh, we're going to come and I can go for a swim. Do diving. We like to do that. Man, I go on the edge of the pool. They boom, dive into the pool. The ladies don't swim their hair. been in the pool maybe twice since the way you know we're gonna be in the house for years i mean over a decade and you know i mean you know maybe twice or three times they've been in the pool over a, over a decade but me and Eli were in the pool. so what i'm saying is that it doesn't matter what i feel whatever the devil wants to i can go there nicely and just take a swim the devil will tell you you can't make it buy yourself an ice cream walk on the beach and watch the waves and just enjoy life see the thing is this you are so concentrated on yourself watching your own head and whatever something is doing that suddenly steals your joy I refuse for something to ever steal my joy I knew any time that I had problems my joy had been stolen and when my joy is gone the devil gets an entrance into my life that's why the, the Lord told me you have to walk this, this compulsory protocol no matter what and when your joy is there and nobody can touch it so refuse to hang around if you are dating somebody who gives you sorrow all the time break up and wait for somebody that God is going to send you away that to hang around with that square square guy your joy is worth your life and when that happens, things will. So this is how personally I started to get successful when you begin to walk in the night. So every time I make a decision, I look and find out the protocol. Now I'm walking in this, in this, in this, in the kingdom protocol. Does my decision break this protocol? That's what I look at first. So I want to make a financial decision. Does this decision break this protocol? Does this trip I want to make break this protocol? Does this friend who wants to become my friend break this protocol? Does this relationship that this person wants me to have with them break this protocol? If it does break that protocol, then we are not going to hang out because I can't break these like Adam broke them in the garden. You see, they were broken in the garden. God brought them with Jesus. I can't break them no more. When Adam broke them, he lost the garden. When you break these, you lose your garden too. See, you can't break these. So Satan wants you to eat some fruit so that you break these. Once you break them, no flow comes to your life. You can go to a church where, where there's a pastor there that can lay hands and people turn green. They lay hands green. You have an, oh, you're going to turn green, you are healed. Let me tell you something. You will be healed, but after two days you are sick again because the healing is not really in that pastor. That pastor can have an anointing to release, but the healing has to be kept by you. He can't keep it. If you don't believe me, just go eat any junk you want. You can't eat any junk you want and think I can eat whatever I want and still be okay because I serve God. If you eat whatever you want, you'll die before your time. You're going to have to eat and run on the treadmill and, 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 and exercise your heart. Exercise your heart. Your heart needs to move all the time. If you don't, the older you get, your heart has got a lot of fat around it. And before you know it, it can't move the way it needs to move. And you're struggling to get tablets to be alive when you could do stuff with your body and run around and do whatever you need to do. Do stuff that give you joy. I'm telling you, family, they go into the word of God and get joy. And you and your wife, when the devil wants to make you argue over money, over bills, just look at everything that God has done for you in the past. Where you are staying, the car you are driving now, the house where you are in now, the beauty that God has given you. You've got so much much more than other people. You've got a lot. Look back. Please don't be blind. Like, like you know, like the, like the stupid five virgins who never looked and saw what the master had done. They forgot and they lost their oil. You have to go and look back. Look at what I have. Look at the house I have. Look at the shoes I'm wearing. Look at the clothes I have right now. Look at where I could have died, where I am right now. Look at your past and begin to rejoice because the same God who caused it to happen in the past, who happened, caused it to happen again in the future, who gave you the car, the house, the clothes, whatever. You, you know, you, you don't shortchange him. The devil is allowed to tell you, can't you, look back and see what God has given you. The only reason why you are waiting, it is because Satan is resisting you because he knows what God has for you. Or maybe you made a decision. But let me tell you something. I don't care what decision a person makes. When you repent, God doesn't see it anymore. You are coming back to your fullness. There are people here that is about to enter a place again that they've never ever been before. God is restoring everything. The devil has stolen. The banks have stolen. Finances have stolen. Your friends have stolen. You are getting it back again. If you can walk in those things, your time is now. Your time is here. We refuse to be broke. We refuse to be 
broke, we're going to walk in the power that God has for us. And we're not going to struggle no more. We're going to walk in that power again. We're going to walk in that power again. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. We're out of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.